Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's say that the problem we did on the previous video was a test problem. You were doing a test and here you got the result that the volume was 8 pi and you really didn't know if you did it correctly. And there's really no geometric way of solving that. It's not a cylinder or a cube or anything like that. But you can use a different method, something we learned in Calculus 1 or Calculus 2, where we sliced the paraboloid into thin little slices like this where here we have the cross section or the surface area of the slice which uh, would be the area times the thickness of the slice which would be a small dz and the area would be pi x squared because we have a relationship between x and z if we only look in the in the x z plane and then we we revolve it around the z axis notice we have a relationship where z equals x squared so that means that the area is going to be pi x squared times dz. Now, of course, we can't integrate an x squared and a dz, so we'll have to arrange that in just a moment. But first of all, we say that volume is equal to the integral of dv, which is equal to the integral of pi x squared dz. And we're going to integrate in the z direction from 0 to 4. So z equals 0 to 4. Of course, we have to change x squared. x squared becomes z. So v is equal to the integral from z equals 0 to 4 of pi times z dz. All right. So the pi can come outside the integral sign because that's a constant. So v is equal to pi times the integral of z dz. And z goes from... 0 to 4. So we have v equals pi times z squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 4. So that means that v is equal to pi times 4 squared over 2. Oh, I guess if you want to be accurate, minus 0 when you plug in the lower limit because you like the 0 there. All right. And so v equals 16 divided by 2, which is 8 pi. Make that look like an equal sign. There we go. And that is exactly the same result that we got on the previous two videos because we did the same paraboloid in different directions. And so you can see that if this was a test, in a matter of a few minutes, you could do a quick check using a different technique to see if you got the same result. Since we got the same result, we're now pretty confident that we did the problem correctly when we used the triple integral method. And so that's a good way to check to see if you did it right. Oh, this is way easier, of course. But hey, there are other problems that you can't solve using this technique. You have to solve it using triple integral technique. So we're learning how to do that and ever more, more complicated problems.